Watch Call TV News Live from anywhere in the world on our website www.calltvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Call TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. On Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Call TV. Leave a space, then news. Call TV News, a 24-hour news station. It's all green in the studio today. We're counting down to the much anticipated presidential election. Um, the focus is away from football and personal life. Everyone is talking about getting back home to vote. It looks as if more Nigerians are getting interested in who leads them politically this season, especially for the first time in the 16-year rule of the People's Democratic Party. Many political watchers are saying this election is quite close and tied to core, other than what we've experienced in the past where the PDP had a few day. Of course, the ruling party is also saying that they are the biggest party in Africa. And, of course, it's not yet time to let go of the presidency. Let's quickly find out what the top stories are today on some of Nigerian newspapers. I have The Nation, I've got The Vanga, The Guardian, as well as The Punch newspaper. The papers are going all green as well. Let's start with The Guardian newspaper this morning. The top story here, Nigeria, 16 years of on broken democracy. They call it the Fourth Republic. Interestingly, what happened in 1999 when uh, General Olusegun Obasanjo took power. He was there for 18 years. Right after that, it was um, Marja Adwastan. Unfortunately, he died in office. The vice president stepped in and won a re-election in 2011. We're here in 2015 and he wants to get back. A victory Nigerians, Jonathan can cherish you want to find out what this editor's notebook is all about it's on the front page of the guardian it continues on page 16. all right i think that's all this in nigeria decides some pictures on the front page interesting for guardian this morning let's uh, move away from there and go to the vanguard newspaper will accept poll's outcome says jonathan buhari there was another peace deal in Abuja yesterday after what we saw in January. Many are beginning to laud this particular approach to peaceful elections only if it will uh, be interpreted in actual peace for the Nigerian people. Because unlike what we saw in Abuja, Amichi's convoy shot out in rivers is another interesting uh, front page story on the vanguard. You get details of that on page 12 as soldiers besiege Oshomale's home. German wings flight 9525 co-pilot deliberately crashed plane, says officials. That's on page 57. All right, let's see uh, other stories. Five killed as robbers raid three banks in Owo. And you see other interesting stuffs if you care to check. Our next point of call is the nation. Buhari, I'm not in the race for money and power. The writer here, APC candidate, worried about misuse of military. I am particularly overwhelmed that despite the sustained smear campaigns against me by the ruling PDP, the support Nigerians have for me has remained intact. End of quote. You want to find out what that is all about? It's on the front page. It continues on page two of the nation. Hoodlums shoot at Amechi's convoy in Port Harcourt. Soldiers lay siege on Oshomale's country home. Mimiko's deputy Olanuse dumps PDP for APC. The top then less than a week after Tele Kuru or uh, the deputy governor of Amechi, uh, of um, River State governor, also dumped the APC for the PDP. Court restrains military from arresting Tinubu. The nation has an interesting picture on its front page. They say it's Jonathan versus Buhari. Our states will vote. We might get back to that subsequently, if time permits us. Let's check out the front page of the punch. Thugs open fire on Governor Amechi's convoy. The rider, soldiers invade Oshomale's home. Now you see a picture, quite interesting one. It's soldiers in the show of strength on Oyemekun Road in Akure Ondo State. 
You also see another one passes by being punished by soldiers on a pedestrian bridge in Lagos. I thought there was a court order that soldiers should not be involved in elections. You want to find out the level of involvement and what's happening across the country. You might also want to check details on the front page of the punch. Co-pilot deliberately crashed German plane. That's on page 56. APC accuses SSS of arresting PVC contractor. That's on page 19. Jonathan Buhari signed Fresh Peace Pact. Page 3 of the punch. FG flood states with soldiers as IG redeploys DIG's CPs. That's on page 2. On the deputy governor defects to APC. Sounds like a stale story now. All right, let's get down to business as we count down to the presidential election this Saturday. I am joined by a very, very veteran uh, public affairs analyst joining us today at DME, Aru Molaro. Good morning, and thank mm -hmm. you for finding time to join us. Interestingly, the NHRC has named Lagos, Rivers, I think Kaduna as three violence-prone areas, you know, for this election. No, no, no. Unfortunately, you also had what um, a major claimed on the front pages today that he was shot at, you know, in Port Harcourt. Would you say that probably uh, this would probably inspire the use of the Nigerian military? you know, as against popular opinion for this election? Yes, yeah, thank you very much. Um, if we have to look at, let us separate this, the attack on Amichi and the APC in River States, mm. let us separate it from the idea of bringing the military into the electoral processes, our election precisely saying. Um, we are expecting the president to, be, to come out openly and address this issue of attacks, the violence. But uh, because Nigerians are not truthful in our assessment of situation, we should be able to tell Mr. President he has not lived up to the peace deals he has been proclaiming, signing. The attack in the river states is not just starting, it has claimed so many lives. Mm. And we expect precise actions to have been taken over the perpetrators of these attacks, but nothing seems being done about it. And uh, what I can say is that it's like the, the, they want to provoke the Amici administration in river states to go into violence. If you count it, there, had been two, there were two bomb attacks, explosive attacks on the PC in the river states. We have not heard anything done to I mean, to stop that. And again, the governor himself being claimed being attacked. It is one thing we are supposed to, government should go and investigate that. And if it is true, I think the opposition in the state should be called to order. Interestingly, we also saw uh, a debate <laughs> among about three uh, gubernatorial candidates for the River State um, election and they seem to have hugged one another express some you know extension of friendship how come that is not being translated you see, into they, that is, we should understand this situation. average black man is an hypocrite hmm. we live in nigeria we live on the principle of this hmm. what we say out what we advocate is not actually what is contained in our actions you see the presidential candidates they are hugging but they are not going how to tell their followers to please stop violence. Mm. To please stop violence. The president signed peace pact deal and he called on ethnic militia. He gave them money. Mm. We know that ethnic militia, they are for violence. He gave them money and a few days ago, some two, three Mondays ago, the OPC took to the street in Lagos states. We have not heard a single statement from presidency about their conduct. They were guided by the military, protected by the police. But we heard from the, I believe, the PDP. Dissociating uh, themselves. The PDP in Lagos dissociating yeah, themselves. That's the PDP. We said presidency who controls the military that guided them, the police that protected them, gave them the security protection. And they went about vow, I mean, violently. You see, all these things we show, if international community will come, in and assist us, then we should have people taking records of this. Because when the time comes, all this needs to be looked into. Then bringing in the military, if we look at 
look at it from both sides, it is good so that they will be able to condone the violence. But will they actually come and be non-partisan? Will they come and deliver the oaths, deliver the services to the oaths they have signed yeah. to protect the integrity of the nation? That is the question that is left for every one of us to answer. What will is the military this come out to do the job? the use of soldiers and police, especially for this election. Uh, would you say that um, given the peculiar security challenges that we've had as a nation, that all heads and all hands should be on deck to safeguard the lives of innocent Nigerians, whether you call it the police or soldiers? Yes, you see, what happened is that ordinarily the police are supposed to take up the responsibility. But because we know as a nation, as Nigerians, that our police has been long compromised. So the police themselves should cover their face in shame. They cannot be entrusted with the security, the civil security of Nigeria. That is why the country is bringing in the military. Ordinarily, the military are not supposed to come and handle civil situations. They are supposed to be there and guide the, the national integrity, uh, the national security borders. But because the police are not trusted to be competent enough to handle this situation, they have long compromised. That is why the soldiers are coming. But the question we are asking ourselves is, will the soldiers be honest? Will the soldier not partisan? Will the soldiers be able to discharge their duty with national patriotism? without taking sides. Are we asking the same question of the police? Would the police also be non-partisan? Why is it that Nigerians don't have challenges with the Nigerian police and then the moment they hear soldiers, they're talking about their partisan... No, you see what I'm telling you is let us agree about the police. They have long, long time ago been compromised. So the police doesn't command respect. The police does not have confidence they, I mean, they don't have, the people don't have confidence in the police. Isn't that reason enough to bring in the Nigerian soldiers, if what you're saying? You see, when, when, when somebody, right. when an institution has lost the trust and confidence of the people, then they may not be competent enough to handle the situation. That is the situation with the police. Every one of us want peace, we want security, we want protection. And we felt there is no way you can entrust all this into the hands of the people that have lost the integrity. So that is why the government is trying to bring in the military. But the way the military is being operated in the past few days is calling for sober reflection in the country. We have held the military in high esteem. We have held the military in high confidence. We have held the military in high trust. And we don't expect the military to come and take side. We want the military authorities to caution their boys to come out and discharge the responsibilities of protecting the national integrity of this country, discharge their duties in such a way that their respect and the confidence people repose in them will still be there after the election. But really, what makes this um, election very uh, interesting? What makes it something of global attention? You recall that the American president also took some time out to speak with Nigerians. The Ghanaian president is already in the country as an international observer. What makes this one so different from the others we've had in the past? You see, it's simply an adage. Let's look at this adage. If your neighbor is eating worms and you don't call him or her to order, when the crisis comes, it will affect you. Our population is so large that if there should result any crisis, national crisis in Nigeria, all our neighboring countries will be subsumed by our outbreak. Mm. So they need to really take so much interest. Mm. Republic of Bini, Nigeria Republic, Chad, Cameroon, these are the countries that constitute our neighbor, immediate neighbors. If any crisis should outburst from Nigeria, all these countries will be subsumed overnight. We have come a long way before this election. It was initially supposed to hold on February the 14th, and then we had a postponement. Would you say that um, this six weeks postponement has given us enough time to put our house in order? No, we wouldn't say it has given us a time to put our house in order. Uh, we would just say, okay, to a certain level, the military has done some wonders 
that gave some people the confidence to be able to vote, particularly in the Northeast, at least with a level of peace that is won within the February 14 and today and date, then we can say, oh, there could be tendency of having election voting taking place in some parts of the Northeast, which if it had taken place on the February 14, then it wouldn't have been possible. Mm. So that is all we can say. But at the end rate, it has not given us. What about on the part of INEC and its preparation for this election? Yes, it has increased the performance of INEC. Ordinarily, if you continue to extend it by six, seven months, those who will not get PVC will not get. Because if you increase it by another month, some people will attain the voting age mm. and they will want to collect PVC. And they too, they will start claiming, oh, I've not been given. So no amount of time you give to the extension that will adequately make one to be 100%. We cannot have 100% preparation. It is everywhere in the world. There cannot be 100% preparation. You know, I, I was speaking with someone earlier today, and I was asking whether, you know, such individual, whether the individual was going to vote. And, you know, the challenge for that particular person was that where he registered, it's some distance from where he lives. And then he will have to trek a long distance, you know, to make that happen. But um, do you foresee that the electorate at this time are ready to go out, you know, to vote? Would you say that the security situation, you know, the successes that the regional force, you know, have recorded in Northeast Nigeria is enough to inspire Nigerians to go all the way this time and participate? You see, if I have to talk because I'm, I'm in Lagos, and if I have to talk based on the occurrences of events in the past few days, I would say the Lagos environment, peace is not guaranteed because in the past, few days there had been pockets of violence and this violence have been, the blames have been put at the doorstep of OPC and everybody keeps wondering if OPC continues like this and they are not checked how are we sure that on the 28th of day, the day of election there will be confidence in people to go out not to talk of people who have to trek a little bit of distance to go and vote so people are willing to go out to vote from what we can see very well. People really want to exercise this, their franchise. But the question is, what is the security situation going to be like? You will hear there, had been, there was serious violence in uh, Oshodi, Moshin area yesterday, Bariga day before yesterday, and a few number of other places. People are watching this, they are hearing this, and they are not having total confidence in the security agencies because ordinarily let me be sincere with you as at this moment we expect to hear that Ghani Adams has been arrested if OPC are taken to the streets and they remain unchecked and we are talking of people going out to vote then government should do something about it because it's not fair well, at this time, would you say that arresting personalities is any... Because before you arrest someone, you, you probably do have something against such individual. Yes, it led a protest of OPC members. And they went about the streets vandalizing. They were displaying weapons. And we expect in a state of sovereignty that they should be called to order. Where we are trying to advocate peace, peaceful conduct, and nobody does anything about it. So if other groups had taken suit, they have followed suit, then there would have been serious chaos. It's all right. Just before we round off this segment, let's do some little predictions. Um, I have the election result here. <laughs> Amazingly, I saw you know, a cartoon on the newspaper and... A young boy was asking the father, uh, how prepared uh, you know, is Nigeria for this election? And he said, oh, we are all prepared, even the result is ready, <laughs> and all of that. I have the result here, but don't be scared, this is not the real result. This is for 2011 general election, and uh, many are saying quite a lot of things might have changed. But then let's see, uh, let's start with North uh, West Nigeria. Kado, Kasina, Kaduna, Zafar, and Sokoto are the... You know, states probably we could lay our hands on. And from what you can see, in Kano, for instance, 
CPC had 60.77% of the votes cast in 2011 presidential election. That was General Buhari there. That was General Buhari there. For the ACN, it was Rebadu. Uh, Rebadu. And um, of course, if you add both together now, it looks as if APC now has um, the ACN and the CPC. Well, just um, take a look now and you see that it looks as if the CPC was in total control of the Northwest in that year. Uh, 60, 70, 51, 66, 59, except for in Kaduna where it was that close. In other states, it was CPC all the way. Do you see a possible repetition of this result on Saturday? Yes, you see, in the recent times, I have had cost to travel the northern part of the country. And uh, I can see that because of the personality that APC is uh, parading, um, I see APC, General Buhari, let me use the word General Buhari, still uh, taking good control of those places. A canoe with a number of personalities there now. In 2011, 440, that was under Kwa Now, and you see the influence of the Hemia of Kano now is another factor. So combination of the two personalities... The Emir with, seem to have been apolitical in recent times. And that's what I'm saying. The influence is influence plus that of the governor. That's what I'm saying, that the Emir really hasn't identified himself specifically, you know, with any particular candidate. But he threw a bombshell just last week. Or was it at the beginning of last week? When he said the 20 billion, missing 20 billion dollars has not been adequately accounted for. So what is the meaning of that? Coming up to tell you it belongs somewhere. Are you also considering that um, PDP had had, you know, some quite a stronghold in this area, especially given the fact that most of the states there that are controlled by APC are formerly were PDP states. Did the governors actually they come with the whole political structure of the ruling? Yes, party? you can't say her. You can't say her. There will be some individual. You see, the campaign the campaign is a matter of distribution of political interest. Not all the political members of the caucus will be properly taken care of. Mm. So you wouldn't say how. Oh. But when you look at personalities, then you can say who holds the majority. Mm. So that's why I say with the influence of the governor, the influence of the Hemia. Now you see these are the people. Like um, one of our king in the Southwest said, look, in Southwest, and Hobart cannot come out and say this is where you should vote for. Nobody will listen to him. But in, no, the case is not like that in the north. Mm. The Hemia has a say to tell you this is where we are going. This is our man. Mm. They believe that that is God choosing. And so with the influence of the governor and the Hemia, I see APC performing far, far, getting even more than 60%. All right. Let's come to the southwest where I believe you'll be more comfortable to analyze. You live in Lagos. Yeah. Are you voting in Lagos as well? By God's grace. Okay, Lagos, amazingly, unlike the pattern of um, electoral results in Nigeria, an ACN governor won in 2011. Yes. In a landslide victory yes. against the PDP. Yes. But it did not reflect in the presidential election. You know, PDP actually had 65.90% of the total vote cast. How do you explain that? Yes, we knew the political under, uh, under arrangement that played out then. The political gladiator in APC, in person of uh, Ashwaju, had an alliance and understanding with uh, President Jonathan a few days to the election. I thought that was a rumor. No, you see, the, the two presidential candidates today, that was the beginning of their crisis with him. Why the two of them, they are not prominent, they are no more in APC today. Mm. Everybody is not in APC. Uh, Adeola, mm. I think Adeola was the, is not in APC also because they felt betrayed. You thought they were sold out. They were sold out. So then the man did not campaign. He withdrew the campaign machinery when it comes to the presidency election. What I'm saying is that um, do we have such sophisticated electorate that would vote for ACN for governorship and then decide to vote for PDP for oh, the presidency? Okay, if you are talking in terms of, you see this time around from what I'm seeing everywhere, people are 
voting on the pattern of party. Mm. And we, not for individuals. Yes, we are not yet matured as a people in Nigeria. It is just a matter of party. Mm. People goes out to vote for party. And likewise, the parties too are campaigning not on individuals, just go vote for our party. Mm. So, and you see, if we look at what is on ground, people will just go out, I want to go for P vote for PDP, <coughs> vote for PDP. Next week when the election comes, I mean on the 11th of April, go for PDP, not minding who the candidate is. Mm. If you ask a lot of people who is contesting on the platform of PDP in Nogun State, they tell you they don't know, but they believe in PDP. They will go there and vote for PDP. We have such situations. Many people will be leaving for Ogun State tonight. They work and live in Lagos, but because they registered in Ogun State, they will go to Ogun State and vote for PDP, but they don't know the party. Many will go to your state. They work and live in eh, They live there. They work in Lagos. They will vote for APC. Mm. That is just the situation. People want to go out. Only a very few knows the personality they want to vote for. I have a couple of friends that say, so oh, I'm going to vote for APC in presidential. Um, I'm going, voting for PDP governorship. And I have other friends in Delaware. Mm. So you see, but because the party succeeded in campaigning on the basis of party line, so many people will go on the party language. Lagos is going to be very tough because of the po pockets of violences that we just mentioned. We see a situation where the margin may not be much. The difference between the two parties, the two leading parties, may not be much. For Lagos, for instance, yes, do, for you, do, you, do you foresee? Because Lagos is at the center of it all for the southwest. Yes. Just like the PDP at the center, the APC uh, has also formed a 16-year government in Lagos. Lagos so, yes. you know, it's going to be quite interesting. But what do you predict to happen? I see APC. APC leading in Lagos. But not in a landslide. Not in a landslide. Because people are getting scared because of the pocket of violence is there, are in there. It's all right. Thank you very much for joining us today. I've been speaking with uh, public affairs analyst at DME. Uh, pardon me with the, with the surname now. At DME. Aru Molaro. Aru Molaro. I wanted to be sure I'm pronouncing that well. We'll take a break now and we'll be back with more on Coal Digest 2015 election special. Stay with us, don't go away. Thank you. We must learn to live together as brothers or perish together as fools. Martin Luther King Jr.